Hey guys, I'm Rich from NeoWin. Today we're talking about Windows 10 Insider Preview Build 16.2.15. Now this was released earlier this week alongside Build 15.2.22 for mobile. Obviously there's no new features in the mobile builds. Um, that's from the Feature 2 branch. It's not from the Redstone Development branch. There was that leaked 16.2.12 uh, build that uh, had the seashell features and all that. That didn't make it into this PC build or obviously the phone build. Um, and that's for reasons that um, I'm not going to go into now. There is a lot to talk about in this PC build, so um, I'm going to try to move along pretty quickly. Now, they're saying there's the new acrylic design in the start menu. I don't see much of a difference, um, although it's only if you have transparency turned on. Uh, one thing that I would look for with Fluent Design is that when you start to hover around the edges of a tile, the beginnings of the next one should start to light up, especially if there's no borders. And that's supposed to help you tell where there's buttons with no borders. I don't see that here. Uh, they also made resizing improvements. Uh, no more glitches when you're, when you're resizing vertically. Um, when, re when resizing horizontally, it won't snap to certain widths. So now you have a nice smooth... Uh, resizing there and you can also do it diagonally now uh, so that's the start menu improvements there's also action center has uh, acrylic now and for some reason all my notifications are gone but um it's there I don't see that much of a difference over here either but um you know you can see that it's kind of blurred rather than being able to see as much of the background um, there is more of a difference when there is notifications there. If I get notifications while we're here, I'll go back to it. We've also got a bunch of Microsoft Edge improvements. So you can see that I have a PDF up here. We'll just get back to that. You can pin websites to the taskbar now. So if I load up NeoWin right here, whoops, you would think that would have auto-completed. No, that's all right. So it's a little buggy, as we can see. Let's just type it in then. All right, this is not going well. All right, we have it. Uh, like I said, it's a little buggy. That's what you get in the fast ring. It's just kind of how it is. So we have the option to pin a site to the taskbar, and that doesn't seem to be working either. It definitely totally worked before. There it is. <laughs> All right, and um, pinning to start has always been there. And um, I thought maybe this kind of meant that they were bringing back live tiles for websites. It does not. Um, this was something that kind of worked in Windows 8.1. You had live tiles for websites that would just re refresh based on an RSS feed. Uh, still not happening. Uh, full screen mode. You can hit um, F11 and it will go right into full screen mode. So there we go. Full screen. And that uh, is a very welcome feature for me because that was actually one thing that I missed in Windows 10 uh, was the ability to, to throw the browser into full screen because sometimes that's helpful if you're making a video or if you just want like if I'm I'm browsing through the notes as I'm making this video and it's just easier with a full screen when you're when you're doing that um, you can annotate books now so let's go to the one book that I've purchased all right um, if I highlight it here see we have a new menu there that um, we can highlight it we can pick a color all right now that's um that's highlighted in pink and of course uh if i click on it we can edit it you can also add a note let's just write up I, I i'm using the mate book for this and um i don't really care for the keyboard on it now i'm really excited for the new mate book all right so so now we can just close this and there's a note there we can click on it to edit it all right, and we'll just close that again. So they added the option to, to highlight more colors and the option to ask Cortana and PDFs in Edge. I can't really seem to get that to work. If I highlight something, normally I would be able to right click and it would there would be the ask Cortana option. I'm not seeing that. If anybody has any tips on that, let me know. Um, other Microsoft Edge improvements, uh, the splash page, uh, so that the color transitions more smoothly to the start new tab pages. Uh, you'll now be able to close the Microsoft Edge app directly using the close button, even when a Java, JavaScript dialog is showing. 
added an option to add tabs to favorites from the right-click context, context menu on tabs. Uh, new tabs will now animate more smoothly onto the tab bar when opened and closed. And we've improved session restore behavior so that when a multi-window Microsoft Edge session is restored by clicking on a link, uh, the window in focus at the end of re restoration is the one containing the new, new link. Sorry, I mean, there's really so much stuff in this build that we kind of have to fly through them. I mean, the, those are kind of minor notes, so uh, I just figured I'd read them off. Uh, Cortana improvements, right? So taking Cortana reminders to the next level through vision intelligence. So there's camera roll insights. Now, um, what you would have to do is you go to settings, and we go to the new Cortana settings, permissions and history, and in here you'll see manage the information Cortana can access from the device. And if you add camera roll to it, um, it will pick up screenshots and such from your camera roll and it'll give you reminders based on them. So say you take a screenshot of a concert that you want to attend, um, it'll say, do you want to keep track of this? And it'll let you add that to your reminders. So there's the Cortana Lasso. So what we're gonna do, I, I can't really, really get this to work, but you can turn it on by going to Devices, Pen and Windows, Inc. Yep. And then um, if we go down to Press and Hold, there's the Cortana Lasso. So that's only supported with some pens. So I guess maybe the Matebook pen doesn't work. Uh, it should work with the Surface Pro 4, Surface Book, and Surface Studio pens. Um, but I can't get it to work, so I can't really demonstrate it. So what you would do is you would hold the back button on the pen and then highlight something on the on the screen and that would do pretty much the same thing as the screen grab one where it'll ask you if, if you wanted to remind you about it okay so evolving the handwriting experience in windows 10 so let's pull up one note so we can type stuff and write stuff okay so i'm going to pull up the on-screen keyboard here and you see, we, we now have new options of different keyboards that we can select. Um, we're going to go to the handwriting keyboard. So if I type, well, this is not easy to write right now, but hello, my name. It, it will eventually move to the side so you have more room to keep writing, see? And um, you can also select text to edit it. Um, you can make corrections with stuff like this. Um, you can split a word by going like that. Or, so, or you could write over text as well. Um, lots of new options there. All right, but that's not all because we have other keyboards. We have a new uh, one-handed keyboard, which you can move anywhere on the screen by uh, holding on to the little moving icon there. And it has the feature that everyone has been waiting for, which is uh, swipe typing. So now I can just say hello. Well, works pretty well. <laughs> I mean, for the most part, right? I, I'm obviously not paying a whole lot of, of, of attention to writing a detailed message. I'm kind of trying to demo the features. So a lot of people have been asking for this. It's, it's pretty much the Windows Phone keyboard, right? Except it doesn't have a little nub. Um, it's great for one-handed, so say if you keep it all the way to the side here, you can use it to type. I think a lot of people wanted it on the regular default keyboard, but hey, that's not what we got. So you can use these to um, align it to the sides, or you can just float it wherever you want on the screen. But for now, we're going to go back to the regular keyboard. By the way, we also have uh, improved handwriting recognition. Um, in English mode for simplified Chinese handwriting. Um, I'm not going into into Chinese handwriting. Um, one more thing about uh, actually, we have a couple more things with pen interaction, but I want I'll might as well show you some more stuff with the keyboard because with emojis, you can now scroll through an entire page instead of there, there used to be a button to to flip from page to page. So now you can scroll. Uh, we also have pen scrolling, which is a highly requested feature, so you can now scroll easily with a pen. Uh, that doesn't work that well yet. I, I was I ended up scrolling before just by hovering over it. Uh, that's not exactly happening right now, so that's pretty good. 
Moving on, we have Find My Pen features. So if we go into Settings over here, and we go to Update and Security, Find My Device, there's now an option to, to where's my pen. Obviously, there's no GPS or anything in your pen, but what it can do is it can tell you the last place you were when using your pen. I don't know how useful that's going to be. Uh, it says Surface Pen, which um, maybe they're just calling all pens Surface Pens. Also, that's not my address, but I guess it's close enough. Um, yeah, so it can tell when you're when you're um, the last time you used your pen. I don't know how useful it's going to be though, because it's like it's not going <laughs> to it's not going to help you find it in your couch cushion. It's going to tell you if you left it at somebody's house, I guess. All right. Um, Hardware keyboard improvements. Okay, so now we're attached to the physical keyboard again. So I wanted to show that this can this can work in uh, Win32 apps because some of the features are UWP only. Um, and there are some features in this build, minor features where I've just sat there like, why isn't this a feature of Windows? And this is one of them. And by the way, there is more. But if you press Win period or Win semicolon, and this is not working, and I wanted to show that because I totally had this working in Chrome before, but obviously not. So we're going to go back to OneNote, uh, Win period, and the emojis come up, which is fantastic because if you use a desktop PC um, and that on-screen keyboard isn't the best option for you, it's it's so easy now to just hit uh, Win period or Win semicolon. It, just a bummer that most of us are going to have to wait until September to to get this. So so now we have our emojis keyboard. Uh, from the people, you can now click up here to um, choose an ethnicity. So you can go from anything from Caucasian to uh, Black and to Simpsons, which I've never quite understood why Simpsons, I guess because that's neutral, right? Um, so... That's the new, I mean, and you can use hardware keys to navigate with them, obviously, arrow keys, uh, tab or shift tab to switch emoji categories, enter to select the emojis, and so on. Um, another thing that they mentioned, which another thing for the, they made a lot of improvements to the on-screen keyboard, um, and now it doesn't want to load, but there's a little microphone on it that you probably noticed from when I had it on before, and you can use that to... Um, you can use that to dictate text in English or Chinese, which is excellent. And you can use that to, um, say, press backspace or clear selection, press delete, delete that, delete last three words, stop dictating and spelling, and so on. So uh, that's useful. So the other one that I've always kind of wondered why it isn't in Windows 10 is that you can now uh, copy link from the share interface. All right, so let's uh, Facebook. If I say share, there's now an option to copy the link. I don't know if, you, if you're if you like me and you've always thought that was a necessary feature, but I can't tell you how many times I've been writing an article about a store app and I go to into the store to grab the link and so I'll share it to mail just so I can copy the link from mail and then close it. So now you can just copy the link. It's wonderful if you ask me. Um, local media folder detection for UWPs like photos, group music, movies, and TV. Um, I'm not going to demo that. Um, there's a couple My People improvements, Nightlight improvements. Those are mostly bug fixes. Um, there's new settings. So if we go into settings, personalization, video playback. Um, this stuff is new. So, by the way, this part where it says unsupported video type or invalid file path, that's a bug. It's a known issue. They, they're they working on a fix. Okay, so um, there's some great battery options down here. You can decrease the resolution of video uh, to save battery life. Um, this box doesn't really seem to do anything. Uh, allow video to play... It's useful. <laughs> it's useful stuff. Automatically process video to enhance it. Uh, there's a new HDR and advanced color settings page. Um, I don't have it because it will be under uh, si system display, and it would say it would say HDR and advanced color settings. But in order for that to show up, you need to be connected to a monitor that supports HDR. And like I said, I'm using uh, Huawei MateBook, uh, the first generation model, and 
doesn't support HDR, so we're going to move on. Uh, per apps default settings page, uh, in the past when using settings you had to start with your file type or protocol if you wanted to make a change to the default app. Uh, that's changing with this build, and you can now start with your app and then see the available options for what it can handle. All right, so we go to settings, apps, default apps. All right, we're going to go in there. And then, so what we do, say we want to change the web browser, right? We have the options here. Um, we can now set defaults by app. So this is going to pull up my apps. Now, if I say Google Chrome, it's going to, and manage, it'll give me these options here. So you have a number of options. Great, right? <laughs> uh, more, more, more customization options are always welcome. All right, so uh, network setting stuff. This isn't uh, really serious stuff. One thing that is awesome though is if you now if you right click, you finally get properties and forget. So it used to be it just disconnect, and that was kind of all you had. That that was kind of a pain. Another change that they made is now instead of a toggle for make this PC discoverable, you get two radio buttons for public or private. Um, and that's about it for networking settings. There's some Windows Update stuff that um, I can't really go into. I mean, view your active Windows Update policies. Um, if there are any applied group policies for Windows Update, a page will now appear in Windows Update settings so you can look at them. All right, uh, understanding your updates. Other improvements, uh, you can now add other Azure Active Directory work school users from settings, uh, stuff like that. So there's some game bar improvements. You go back into Edge because somehow it now identifies that as a game, which um, I, I, won't, I won't go there. Uh, but yeah, so you can now change settings in... Um, you can change the broadcast language for Mixer, which used to be Beam, if you're not really following along. Uh, the Game Bar now has a button to enable or disable game mode for the current game. Its icon will be updated soon in a future flight. Uh, now allows you to take screenshots of games running in HDR, which obviously nothing's running in HDR. We went over that. Screenshots of games running in HDR should now correctly save a copy in PNG. That is tone map to, to SDR. Uh, Bitrate changes during game broadcasting the mixer should now be smoother and more seamless. Uh, a bunch of stuff that I can't really uh, demo. All right, I'll, I'll include the release notes in the in the description. All right, some ease of access improvements, scan mode on by default. All right, narrator input learning, new and improved hotkeys. And we also have font improvements and de developer improvements, but those are the key highlights for this build. Uh, one thing that I'm still waiting for, and if you followed my videos for for new Windows 10 builds in the past, and you know that the one thing that I've always wanted is OneDrive placeholders, and they've announced them. They're coming in the next update, but they're not available just yet, and that's really all I want. Uh, so it should be coming soon. I've been waiting... Um, about two years for it so uh that'll be a fun day and maybe i'll just make a if that's the only new feature i will make a video just to show that off because yeah all right guys that's it <laughs> i'm rich from neowin and have a great night